when you were in utter despair, would having access to someone like you have helped you? <clears throat> That's another interesting idea for a science fiction story <laughs> of time traveling where my old, my 28 year old self comes here and sits somewhere in the audience and listens. Now, would that have helped? There needs to be a readiness in the person to be helped. Some definitely want to suffer a bit more. They would definitely refuse any kind. The openness would not be there. There were times at that time when I, people noticed around me that I was unhappy. There was a professor of the university. He was doing transcendental meditation and he said to me, you really should be doing meditation. And I said, no, I don't want to do meditation. Uh, I lose all my motivation to work and I, that's, not, that's not what I want. I'm, I'm, I was a bit scared of meditation. It said it would transform me and make me completely ineffective because I wanted to achieve, I wanted to become an important intellectual. So meditation would have thought might be an obstacle to that. No, I'm not doing this. So I refused. The help could have been. This was a hint of the universe that why don't you do transcendental meditation? You might be... Um, Le less anxious, and, and but I didn't do it. So perhaps if I had met myself, I would have said, who is this guy? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, some, you cannot help everybody, you might have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, some humans need and if they cannot, if there's no openness to be helped, it means they are happy with the, te with the spiritual teacher they already have, and his or her name is suffering. Then they just need to experience that a bit more, because if you show them the possibility of going beyond suffering, or somebody else in a different way shows them the possibility, and somebody else does, and another therapist, and another, or they open a spiritual book, say, what is this mumbo jumbo? not ready, not ready to listen, need to suffer a bit more. Suffering has a certain function in the evolution of consciousness. Uh, I would, if, let's say, if you were an omnip the omnipotent God and you removed all human suffering right now, that's the, that's the end of the evolution of consciousness, of course. You could, if you are totally omnipotent, you could say, let consciousness be, only express itself right now. <laughs> That's not how it works. But <laughs> the, it cannot express itself except through this. Suffering is necessary until it no longer is necessary for you. And so it has a function within the totality. It is, you can see it in your own life. I had to go through it up to that point. And there's a lot of collective suffering. There's not only suffering in, in poor countries. Yes, there is. There is different kinds of suffering everywhere. There's intense suffering in the rich countries. You can probably find more happy people in the poor countries than in the rich countries. So they're just different degrees of suffering. And so, at some point, the individual realizes that suffering that is ultimately self-made, self-produced, and then the shift happens. And then evolution has a, is a, of a different kind. It is no longer impelled or fueled by suffering. You still evolve, but it's no longer through suffering. It's so, and that has, when you encounter a spiritual teaching or a spiritual teacher, that is the moment when that spiritual teacher takes over from suffering. 
the uh, that's the old spiritual teacher. So then you it's, you get you get handed over to the new one. <laughs> That's a wonderful, that should be celebrated in a person's life, the transition from Mr. and Mrs. Suffering, <laughs> or the guru called Suffering, Sri Sri Suffering, <laughs> <laughs> to an actual teacher. 